In this video, we are talking about decoction. So first, what is decoction? Well, decoction is a process that was once necessary for the brewing process. Basically, the idea is you pull off a portion of the mash, which is the water and grain mixed together so that you can extract the sugar, and you boil that mixture in order to do a few things. So traditionally, that was necessary because the grain that you got was most likely under modified and needed a, an extra boost to break down all of that carbohydrate that's inside of the grain into fermentable sugars later on in the process. This was achieved by starting the mash at a lower temperature, pulling a portion off, boiling it, and then reintroducing it into the total mash volume so that you raise the temperature and allow the enzymes occurring in the grain to then be at a more appropriate temperature to break down proteins and other starches that were complex inside of the grain. Well, thanks to modern malting practices, most of the malt that we get today is gonna to be highly modified and it's not really a necessary part of the process any longer. But there are a couple of reasons that we still do it today. So the way that I do decoction at Tanglefoot Brewing is what I like to call a modified decoction where I pull off a portion of the mash. It's historically about one third that you wanna pull off for the mash, but my setup is not the best setup. So what I do is I end up scooping as much as I can into this big old stock pot here and just boiling it. So before I explain the reason that I do decoction, let's go ahead and pull some of that mash off and put it into the pot. This is our mash right now and it has been steeping for about 20 minutes. That's an appropriate amount of time to start breaking down a lot of the starches and carbohydrates in there. So now we are ready to pull off a portion of this and begin the decoction. And when you're a fancy brewer like myself, you utilize the most premium high-end equipment possible in order to achieve the best results, like this aluminum pot. Really, as long as it gets the job done, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm gonna take this scoop and scoop out as much of this as I can into that pot, and then we'll start the decoction. Always make sure you stir, otherwise it's gonna get burnt on the bottom. So while we're waiting for this to heat up to a boil, let's go ahead and talk about the reasons that I perform a decoction here at Tanglefoot. So historically, Czech lagers are decocted multiple times. Pilsner Raquel was famously decocted three separate times, and this does a lot of things to the beer. First, like we mentioned, the actual conversion of the complex sugars into more fermentable sugars. So the mash with modern day highly modified malts, this isn't absolutely necessary, but it still does aid in the conversion of the sugars. Secondly, this adds a whole layer of complexity to the beer. When you're boiling this sugar solution, you are caramelizing that sugar and you're gonna be turning those normal malt sugar characteristics into a more caramelly, sweet, full-bodied, rounded malt character. So the benefits of decoction on a small scale with modern brewing practices is primarily for flavor contribution. The third reason, and this is also a flavor contributor, is the husks that are in the grain have what are called tannins. Tannins are a compound that when they're in the final product of beer, they kind of give this sensation in the mouth uh, if you've ever drank a very tannic red wine, your jaw might get like a tingling sensation. Those are the tannins that are sitting on your palate. The big question that people give me all the time is, is decoction really necessary? Well, the short answer is no, it's not necessary, but it does add a different flavor profile. And I personally think it provides a larger amount of complexity to the beer than just mashing in with grains. But if you wanted to do an easier method, you could simply adjust the grain bill, which for a Pilsner is generally just Pils malt, and you can supplement a little bit of caramel malt in there so that you're adding some of those complex caramelized sugars without having to take this extra step of decoction. So what are the downsides of decoction? Well, the main downside to decoction is time. This step adds a large amount of time to the brewing process. Uh, my modified decoction, where I pull off a single decoction and boil it on the stovetop, only adds about 30 extra minutes to the brew day, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you were to triple decoct, like Pilsner Raquel does, that would add hours to your brew day. Again, if you think that the flavor contribution from the decoction step is worth it, then by all means, go for it. Add the extra hours to your brew day and just sit back and relax and watch this stuff boil. It's pretty nice, smells good, looks nice, sounds cool. So we're gonna give this a stir because it's starting to bubble up on the sides. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you if you decide to do a decoction in your brew day. 
Uh, obviously, this is a much more prominent method for lager brewing, but it could be interesting to do in a blonde ale or a pale ale, just to see if you can get some more oomph out of that malt character. Another downside to decoction is the requirement of separate equipment. So in a standard microbrewery in the United States today, the most common way to brew beer is what's called a single infusion mash. So you have a mash tun, this thing, and a brew kettle, this thing. And generally you'll have a hot liquor tank, but in this case I use my brew kettle to heat up the hot water for the mash. So you will take the hot water from the hot liquor tank, put it into the mash tun with the grain, and then separate that wort from the grain and boil it in the brew kettle. The reason that this setup isn't ideal for decoction is that unless your mash tun is jacketed or you have a means to transfer not just the wort, but the actual grain particulate, from the mash into a boil kettle or a separate vessel for boiling, it makes it really tricky to achieve a proper decoction. So this would be a two vessel system, a boil kettle and a mash tun. In breweries that are built for a decoction setup, they generally have a three to four vessel system. So a mash tun where you mash the grain with the water, a louder tun where you separate the grain from the wort, a boil kettle, and in the mash tun or the louder tun, you would have jackets in order to boil the grain for the decoction step. Now, unless you're a die-hard decoction fan and you're gonna be producing loggers at a high rate, you're probably not gonna buy one of these systems. So doing it this way in a separate pot is kind of your best bet. And if you're doing anything larger than this three barrel system that I'm brewing on, it's really tricky because you're gonna have to be moving a lot of grain, a lot of mash manually, which is kind of a pain in the ass. And it's pretty dirty, fills everywhere. But if you're really die hard, you wanna do it correctly, that's the way to go. So this is starting to come to a boil. Let's take a look at it and then describe what's happening. So this is boiling up pretty nicely. I've got both burners turned on right now, so it's getting an excessive amount of heat. Once it goes to a rolling boil, I will turn one of the burners off. But we are boiling all of this wort solution. The smell right now is kind of like caramelized sugar. Uh, all that nice malt richness, and this is a dark beer, so all that roasted grain smelling like coffee and chocolate in here. So now that this is rolling to a boil, I'm gonna turn off one of the burners because it is going to boil over. And I usually perform this step for about 10 minutes. You can go up to 20 minutes if you want, if you want more of that caramelization character, but I found that 10 minutes works pretty well for the system. And once this is done, I'm going to reintroduce it back into the mash. We're gonna stir it up and that's gonna raise the total mash temperature so that we can then separate the wort from the grain at a higher temperature, which makes it less viscous and easier to separate. The decocted mash back into the full mash, stir it up and bring the temperature up. And this is just the reverse process of what we just did. Steam show. Now we're gonna give it a stir. So that's pretty much the basics of decoction. Uh, I am by no means a decoction expert. I've never done a full decoction with multiple steps, multiple rests, hitting specific temperature targets. Uh, and frankly, I don't intend to. Like I mentioned before, it's not absolutely necessary from a conversion standpoint. And I feel like the flavor that I get out of this modified decoction is more than enough to get the desired result that I'm looking for. So if you feel like you want to do decoction, hopefully this helped you. And if anybody has any ideas, tips, or tricks on how to do this more effectively, or any systems that you use that you think are cooler than just putting the grain into a pot and boiling it, let me know. Comment down below, subscribe, check out the rest of the channel. I've got a bunch of videos on here talking about other processes in the brewery and what it's like to grow a small brewery.